Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. It may seem like it has nothing to do with residency to talk about the people that are going into school now, but I think it has most everything to do with it because uh, I got this email and I was just so disappointed when I read it and I understood what was happening. Uh, this is a recruiting email from a school of pharmacy to a pre-pharmacy student. Uh, the subject line reads, How to Get Rich While Serving Your Community. The median income for pharmacists is $124,170 according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, but the blank school of pharmacy is more than just a route to a great salary. And when I communicated with the student, we realized, you know, this school is in the bottom 20% of NAPLEX scores. Um, maybe a school that reaches out in that way is that the right school you know I, I don't want to say yes or no but then they think they're the only ones you know doing this but then you go to another school and you say okay and this is from another student and he said you know I've never talked to them I don't know how they know this but it said uh, they he hadn't shown transcripts or anything like that it said you have all the right qualities to become a great pharmacist but space in our program is limited well you've just completely lost any credibility because you just said somebody's exactly right for the program but they've never talked to you and your application will receive priority review if you submit it early begin in a career in pharmacy with a potential starting salary of 120,000 a year and so in just these two emails and the big danger is that emails are written communications that are recorded so as people are graduating now and as they're getting their notices on the 13th, uh, whether they got residency or not, they're going to be able to go back to these emails and they're going to say, look, this email from your school said I'm going to make 124000 Well, I'm making zero right now. Or, you know, I just got offered whatever I got offered. And yes, you know, it's according to the BLS. I get that. And it's a potential starting salary. I get that. But what we're doing is we're communicating that the reason you should be interested in pharmacy is because there's a large salary attached to it. Well, there's a lot of work attached to it. And you need a lot of persistence. And you need to go through a lot of stuff to get to the end point. And to kind of continue with the conversation, we have kind of the lawnmower parent pharmacy school uh, recruiting emails. And for those of you that don't know what happened from helicopter to lawnmower, a helicopter parent is one that's always around making sure everything's okay uh, and things like that. A lawnmower parent is one that just mows over any obstacle in the way of their child's success. And what we're seeing is that pharmacy schools are literally just begging uh, students to, to come in. And by not creating obstacles, I feel like we're creating a situation where we're not getting students that are going to know what it is to fail until a day like, you know, the 13th of March in this year. So I'll, I'll read you the two. And I feel like, again, these two schools think we're the only ones doing this, but the, the verbiage is almost identical. Uh, so the first one says, because I want to give you every chance to pursue your PharmD, I have extended the deadline to apply to Blank College of Pharmacy to April 1st. Okay. You will get a quick admissions decision, fast interview scheduling, a priority scholarship consideration, signed the dean. Okay, And the, uh, they put the dean. And I don't think the dean actually wrote that. I think that marketing has taken over and that pharmacy is so uncomfortable doing these types of things that they've given over power to these marketing companies or these people to do it and they've just kind of washed their hands on it and just say okay well you know do what you do and I, I want to talk about I think what I think is a better way but let me read you the other one so again the, the one that you just heard was a quick admissions decision fast interview scheduling priority scholarship consideration this is an email that's coming out in February. Remember, this isn't for the early appliers. This is for people that are applying late. Okay? Apply to Blank College School of Pharmacy and you'll still receive 
a streamlined admissions process with no supplemental information or PCAT score required, a prompt admissions decision, and automatic consideration for scholarships. Exact same thing, quick decision, fast interview, scholarships. The misconception was and the fear was that I'm not going to get accepted. That was completely a fiction. You know, the uh, the acceptance rate is 82.9% last year. So you apply to two schools, you're pretty much in unless you're applying to some of the most competitive. And what we're seeing is, okay, so on the one end we're telling them, look, you're going to make all this money and if you are interested in money, you should come to pharmacy school, but just make sure you want to help people too. And then we're also saying, we're going to make this so easy for you. We're just going to let you in. But when it comes time to residency, when it comes time to graduation, when it comes time to getting through three or four years of school, that isn't easy. So when you work as a lawnmower admissions committee, what you've done is you've allowed people to enter that have not had obstacles in their way and once those obstacles get up then it becomes very difficult I, I assure you um, this one wasn't from an email but it was I'm watching YouTube and I click on the advertisement and it sent me to early decision I think the web the person in marketing didn't talk to the web person to get it to the right tag to get to regular admission but this is what kind of shocked me it said an early admissions, this is benefits of early decision, an early admission decision so you can focus on pharmacy school or preparing for it, an average 90% admissions rate, and a guaranteed scholarship upon admission. Whoa, 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 hold up. How do you know what the admissions rate is if you haven't seen the applicants yet, right? And so maybe this is from the last year, and that they just, people that apply early tend to be high GPA, you know, really good applicants. But I think that putting that you, one, have an average 90% admissions rate to early decision is really just saying, hey, you're going to get in, but you may not get in if you go regular. And the thing with early decision is you're locked in. Now, AACP is going to get rid of this. Early decision is going to phase out over the next two years. And... The idea is, you know, this way, if you get rid of early decision, people will apply to more schools. But I, I, I think it's going to actually do the opposite. Um, what's going to happen is maybe they do apply to more schools, but then what you're doing is you're creating a competitive economic market. And you're, it's going to be the race to the bottom as uh, pharmacy schools fight, you know, tuition wise uh, to get it. So it'd be good for the students, uh, but I, I just. I don't think it's going to do what they think uh, it's going to do. Uh, this other email I got uh, was an invitation for a PharmD interview webinar. And the irony comes from the title. So the title is Things You May Want to Know That No One Has Told You. Okay. And when the NAPLEX scores came out for this school, they're in the bottom 18%. Well... I assure you that is nowhere in their marketing materials, nowhere in the email. It is just, hey, here's some tips for the interview just in case you don't get in. But obviously, um, that's not really that much of an issue. Uh, the next one was uh, kind of a sister school, at least same state. Uh, sooner you submit your application, the better chance you have to secure a seat. Uh, generous scholarships available. And this is a couple weeks ago. So again, scholarships are available, and this is a school that is in the bottom 10, not the bottom 10%, the bottom 10 of all pharmacy schools. And then this one, you can tell the marketing team is being, they're, they're farming this out. It said, thank you for considering enrolling in our 2019 fall class. Uh, this is 2020. Um, so what I think is happening, and this uh, is also happening in the national campaign as well, and I'll talk about that in a second, is that there is a separation between the communications that are going to potential students and the actual people that that school is representing. And it's just an embarrassment that 
how can I, as a pre-pharmacy advisor, explain a way how to get rich while serving your community? Like, how, how can I explain that? Like, I, I can't. Like, there, there's, no, there's, no, there's no way I can get out of that. Um, you know, really, is this how pharmacists are? You know, they just want the money. That's what they want to do. And then they'll help people. And, and you know, when, when somebody sends me an email like that, it's just like, no, no, that's, that's not what we are. Um, but apparently there's this divide. Now, there is the farm for me. Uh, let me make sure I get it right because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it wrong. Um, pharmacy is right for me or something like that campaign. And their YouTube channel has 47 followers. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. When you see a YouTube channel that has engagement and that has a lot of followers, it's because there is an authentic connection between the audience and the person and I know they paid like 50 grand or something like that to start this thing off I don't know what they've paid you know all together and they have this really authentic uh, first video uh, under pharmacists wear white coats and many hats and it's a real school of pharmacy and real people but then when you go to the second video I'm like I know that person and I don't know that person it's that when I write books, I have I have to get permission to you know use certain images and things like that, and so I spend countless hours in front of Adobe Stock, looking at stock photos and videos and things like that. And I'm like, I've seen that before, and it's a 4K portrait of smiling young medical worker in a team meeting, and it's a generic stock video quite literally a generic stock video and i don't think i think we're better than that i know you don't want to show preferential treatment towards a school of pharmacy or something like that but when you put stock photos and stock videos up and you do it in such a way that it's not what we're doing authentically i i don't understand why we keep pipetting things uh, i understand there are phds and pharmds but again it's just not authentic. It's not real people. If you want real engagement, you have to have real people. And when I see these recruiting emails coming to the people that I'm trying to advise, you know, what am I supposed to tell them? So here's my overall recommendation. I think your marketing campaigns for at least these schools that are sending these out are absolutely ridiculous it's the solution is so so clear to me to all of this all you have to do is make sure that every graduate gets a position that they're happy with and that doesn't mean a pharmacy job no matter what career you're in half the people are reconsidering even if it's medicine even if it's law even if it's whatever and you know that time in pharmacy school is a time of discovery and i don't have a job that requires a pharmacy license but i love my position and i, I love what i do and i make more than i make a lot uh, when you add everything up that i do and it doesn't have to be that way. I, I would have thought that was kind of weird if, if they had sent me an email that said, hey, by the way, you're going to make such and such amount of money. I'm like, okay, whatever. I didn't know how much pharmacist salaries were until I want to say my P3 year when we started hearing back from the class in front of us. And they were bachelor students in front of us. And, uh, you know, they're like, hey, you know, we're making such and such and they pay this much in California, which was always more than, you know, everywhere else and at Kaiser or whatever. And so I guess what I'm saying to the pharmacy schools is, look, you can't have it both ways. You can't have this stock photo thing going on. You can't ask us to say, look, you need to send people to pharmacy schools because they have great opportunities in all these varied fields. 
but then the communications that you're sending to the pre-pharmacy students has this type of rhetoric okay i'm i had phd work in rhetoric i understand the ethos the logos the pathos all of that stuff that's behind this and it just needs to stop what i'm asking you to do is to police yourselves to say you know we put in the oath of a pharmacist that we're going to have the highest moral and ethical values right well the highest moral and ethical value is not to tell someone that the median income for the pharmacist is 124 170 but not to tell them that there's zero percent growth on the exact same page that you got that number from it's not right to tell someone that they can begin a career in pharmacy with a potential st starting salary of 120 a year if you're not putting the numbers from your actual school of pharmacy there if you're giving people a quick admissions decision and fast interview scheduling and priority scholarships, are you not giving them to the people that already accepted? Is this like a cell phone thing where like if you're a customer now, you don't get anything, but if you're a potential customer, you get all these scholarships. So I'm pleading, asking, will you please, please just fix the college of pharmacy websites fix this recruiting to just not make it about the money and to make it about the things that we are doing but we can't do that if the link to pharmacy is right for me goes to stock adobe photos and videos of actors how am i supposed to send my pre-pharmacy student to a place that is that inauthentic so it's really not that hard to fix. All you have to do is just put the real photos on there, the real videos on there of the real people. And recognize that anytime those emails go out, those emails are staying in that person's inbox. They're not deleting them. And when they graduate from your school of pharmacy and they don't get a job or they get a job that pays a lot less, them and those people that have parents that are attorneys, they're going to come to the dean's office and they're going to be like, look, this is your name. This is your name at the bottom of this email saying my kid's going to get 120 grand." And if those are the kinds of conversations you want, then go ahead. But I'm telling you, as this gets worse and those emails are in all of those inboxes, it's going to get really bad for you guys. And I don't want it to be bad for you guys. I want to be able to refer people. I want to be able to send them somewhere. But what am I supposed to do when I keep seeing half-truths with omissions, clear omissions that, yeah, the median income was reported that way, but they also reported the growth was going to be stagnant. And you heard that at the AACP meeting, that there were going to be more pharmacists than there were positions. So, look, there is a great job market, period, right now. And that job market can be open to pharmacy students that are graduating. But if you keep bringing in people that you're promising these sums of money to and the money isn't there they're going to leave and if you keep bringing in people and making it so easy for them to come in it's going to be very easy for them to leave so my hope is that you know we will work as hard as we can and that's what i've dedicated the residencyhelp.com website uh, the pharmacy residency podcast uh, to making sure that students get jobs when they graduate but we really need your help and I just hope that in some way some kind of reform comes along that will take care of these digital messages that are really just killing killing our ability uh, to refer students uh, to pharmacy schools Hey, thanks again for listening to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. I do encourage you to go to residencyhelp.com, get on the mailing list. I'll send you out an email every Friday during residency season, but then afterwards, uh, I'll still have a number of episodes uh, on 
helping you get through residency itself. Uh, and then if you're somebody that's looking at residency in the future, uh, I'll also have uh, content for that as well. Uh, if you have a question, I'm pretty good about getting back to you. And if I don't have an answer, I will know someone that does. Uh, so thanks again for listening to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, please do uh, rate and review. It really matters in terms of uh, our ability to reach more people. Thanks again.